Hi everyone, I'm Sky Weston and in this video, we will see how to display an image from the web in Godot. Let's start with an empty Godot project. I will create a main scene first. Next, we'll create a scene that will be used to display an image from the web. You can design the UI however you feel like. The only required thing is a node that can display 2D textures. I'm going to go with Texture Rect. I will update its expand and stretch mode and bring in the Godot icon image to see how it looks. Perfect. So now let's create an HTTP request node that will make request to any image resource on the web. In this tutorial, I won't be covering about how HTTP request nodes work and I assume that you are familiar with it. However, if you are not, I have already made a detailed tutorial on this topic. You can find the link to that tutorial in the description of this video. First, I will connect a method to request completed signal. This signal is gonna be emitted when a response is received from the request we made. Next, I will define a public function download with URL parameter. I am creating another signal that's gonna be emitted when a response is received. The purpose of this signal is that it will be used by outside classes and will only provide necessary data and not everything. I will simply emit it as soon as we get a response and pass everything except headers. And sorry, I misspelled it. It's actually res received, as in response received. I will now make one final signal that's gonna be emitted when the request itself fails. I'm gonna call it while making a request to the given URL. Getting image data from the web requires a basic GET request, so we only need to pass the URL and that is it. As you can see, the request method returns an error value and if it's not zero, meaning not okay, then that means there was an error in making the request, so it means no response will be received at all. With this, we are done with image download API scene for now. Let's head back to image web scene. Create a script for this scene as well. I will first get references to texture rect and image download API. Let me add image download API to this scene. So let us first define and connect methods to image download API's request failed and response received signals. With this done, let's create reset UI function. And as the name suggests, we will remove the texture and set visibility to false. We will call this in ready. Now let's work on the method that gets called when we receive a response. 
it's here we will be setting the image that we receive on texture rec node. First we check if there was some error in the response itself. If there was, we log a warning message. We will later create the UI for showing the message in game. By the way, let me first complete the method that will be called when a request fails because it's very short. So here I just log a warning message and that's it. Now back to the previous method. I forgot to return out of this function when a response is not successful. So let's not forget to do that. Now if the response was successful, we proceed ahead with parsing that image data. I will first create a new instance of image class. This class has a method that parses input data which is in bytes and if successful, it provides us with a decoded representation of that image that Godot can read and process. For now, we will assume this input data contains PNG image data only. We will handle other types of images shortly. So in our case, the bytes data is contained within the body variable. Let's pass body as the argument. And if the process of decoding is not successful, we print a warning and return out of the function. Otherwise, if it's successful, we create an image texture from that image data and set it to the texture rec node. Finally, we make texture rec node visible. One more thing, in request failed callback method, we can set texture to be blank and invisible again. With this done, let's get to the main scene and add image web scene into it. Okay, so I forgot to make the function that makes the request in first place. Uh, let me do that quickly. First, let's define a public URL variable and group all these exports to make the inspector cleaner. Now we can add an image URL over here. Finally, let's create download image function that makes the request to the URL. I will call this in ready. And depending upon your use case, you can call this method anytime later too from other scripts as well. With all this done, let's set a URL to this image web instance in the main scene. But before setting the URL, let me run the scene and check if warnings are being logged or not because the URL is empty right now. And yes, we get the warnings. So for the image URL, I will pick an image from Godot's website itself. I will go with PNG because that is what our current implementation supports. I will copy its URL and paste it in image web's URL property. Now let's run the game and see the result. Awesome, it works. Let's try an SVG image now. If we run the game now, the image parsing fails and we get our warnings and Godot's inbuilt errors printed out. As you may have guessed, this happens because we are using load PNG from buffer method which only works with PNG images and our URL pointed to a SVG image. You can see the image class provides us with methods for many popular image types. Let's make use of them. But first, we need to identify what image format is there in the response. To find that, we can get help from the response headers. Let's print it out and run the game again. The headers data has content type property 
which tells us about the image format. We use this information to call correct method for parsing the image data. First, I will define image load method variable that will store the name of the correct method to be used for parsing the image. Then I will make a dictionary where its key will be the content type string and its value is going to be the name of the function used for parsing image data. Now once we get the response, I will first extract the content type value. Then I simply fetch the method name using content type as the key. And if there is no such key found, then it returns an empty string. Finally, I pass this method name through response received signal. Back in the image web script, in the response received callback function, I will add a new parameter, image load method that we are now receiving through the response received signal. Before proceeding ahead, let's confirm if we are getting the method name or not. Great, we are good to go. So now I'll do a little bit of changes. I will first set error to a default value of failed. And then in the if condition, I check if the method name is not empty. And if it's true, then we are good to go with parsing. So to call a method in GD script using a string and also pass arguments, we make use of this very handy call method. You can know more about this method in the documentation. Now let's run the game and see the result. And here we go, it works perfectly. To confirm one last time, let's try out some more images. Awesome, it's working great. Great job coming this far into this video. So the primary goal of this tutorial is complete. I will now going to add a better UI for displaying status and error messages. So this part of this video is going to be optional. In the image web scene, I will add a new label for showing the status and error messages. Let's save this as its own separate scene. Now let's get into the image status scene and create a nice little animation to make it look more interesting. This animation will be played when a status message is to be shown on screen. Next, I will create a basic idle animation, which will be the default and played when error messages are shown. Now let's create an image status script that will allow other scripts to interact with this scene. 
Here, I am defining color values for status and error messages. Also, a reference to animation player. So now, let's create a bunch of small functions. Height status, as the name suggests, hides image status. Show status method displays a given message while playing processing animation and with default modulate color. Finally, show error is similar to show status with the difference being that animation and self-modulate color are both different. Let's set these values in the inspector. Now back to image web script, add a reference to image status. First, we will be hiding status whenever reset UI is called. Then while download request is being processed, a status message saying downloading image will be shown. Finally, wherever we pushed a warning, we will now instead show an error using the image status scene. Also, I will hide the status once the image is downloaded and fully loaded. One important thing I forgot to do is that to add a timeout duration, it's set to zero by default. That means there's no timeout duration. Meaning if for some reason a server takes too long to give a response back, then HTTP request node will keep waiting endlessly. So I will set timeout to 15 seconds. Great, now let's run the game and see how it looks. Okay, I forgot to set image status. Let's do that quickly and run the game again. Awesome, we can see the status message now. Let me empty out the URL and see what image status shows us. Great, we are getting the error displayed. But the text is overflowing, so let me do some quick adjustments to make it look good. Now it looks much better. And that's it. You can now use image web scene anywhere and any number of times. Given an image URL, it fetches it and displays it on the screen. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And if you have any doubts or feedback, then let me know in the comment section down below. I will see you in the next video. Namaste.